Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we learned about the what and why of pre-rendering. In this video, let's learn the how. Now Next.js supports two forms of pre-rendering, static generation and server-side rendering. Both serve different use cases and there is quite a bit to learn about each of these pre-rendering methods. In this video, let's focus on the first method. Let's understand what is static generation, when to use it, and how to use it. Static generation is a method of pre-rendering where the HTML pages are generated at build time. So the HTML with all the data that makes up the content of the web page is generated in advance when you build your application. This method is also the recommended method to pre-render pages whenever possible because the page can be built once, cached by a CDN and served to the client almost instantly. This as you might have guessed leads to a huge performance boost for your application. Examples for when to use static generation include blog pages, e-commerce product pages, documentation and marketing pages. Alright, so we now know what is static generation and when to use it. The next question is how do we use it? Or how do we inform Next.js that we want to statically generate a particular page in our application? Well, the good news is that Next.js by default will pre-render every page in our app. So the HTML for every page will automatically be statically generated when we build our application. This is the reason in the previous video, we were able to see all the HTML elements when viewing the page source. Now I'm pretty sure you might have a question at this point in time. Hey Vishwas, Throughout this video, you've been mentioning that pages are pre-generated at build time. But there is no build for our application yet, is there? Aren't we running the application in development mode? Now this is a very good question to have in your mind. But what you need to understand here is the intention behind a production server versus a development server. For production, an optimized build is created once and you deploy that build. You don't make code changes on the go once it is deployed. A development server, on the other hand, is all about the developer experience. We should be able to make changes in our code and we want that code to immediately reflect in the browser. We can't afford to build our app once, make the change, rebuild, make the change again, and you get the idea. So here's what the Next.js team decided. For production builds, a page will be pre-rendered once when we run the build command. However, in development mode, a page will be pre-rendered for every request you make. So if you visit the home page, it is pre-rendered and served. Refresh, The page is pre-rendered and served. There is no one-time pre-rendering, but rather pre-rendering on every request to ensure code changes are reflected on every request. And it might seem strange when I say this, but you don't worry much about static generation in development mode. You mainly have to understand how it works when you build your application, and we will talk about it in detail a few videos down the line. So here is the point I want you to take away from this video. Next.js by default, without any additional configuration, statically generates every page in our application when we build it for production. This allows the page to be cached by a CDN and indexed by a search engine. Here is the image from the Next.js documentation for a quick summary of static generation. The HTML is generated at build time and is reused for each request. 
Now the example we've looked at did not require fetching any external data, but that might not be the case all the time. Which leads to our next topic of discussion. Static generation can be done with and without data. You might have a marketing page where all the content is already known and can be coded as part of the page itself. The index page in our Next.js app is also one such example. However, for some pages, you might not be able to render the HTML without first fetching some external data. Maybe you need to read some JSON from the file system, perhaps call an external API, or even query your database at build time. So in the next video, let's learn how to handle such scenarios and statically render pages after fetching some data.